not just a new year, but a new decade. We are entering a new decade. So pray that today God will accelerate you, will propel you, will project you into the next decade, even tonight. The Holy Spirit will move you, will strengthen your legs and your hands to do warfare. Hallelujah. Let's begin to pray. Begin to pray upon yourself. That Lord, I have left everything and come to your house. Tonight, 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 do a new thing. Propel me into the new year. Project me into the new year. Yes, prophetically, begin to declare upon yourself. Ask for something big. we thank you father that your presence is here already even before the foundation of the world lord you have declared a purpose for us you know each of us here by name your word says, in fact, you know the number of hairs on our head. You know what we've been through. And you know what we need to get, to get through the next decade. So, Father, unleash your word with power. Unleash your word with clarity. And prepare our hearts to receive it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Once more, we thank God for the testimonies for what he's doing in the lives of his children. Amen. The after-school program, you know, parents always come here and they thank me for what is going on there, but um, there are people who are working very hard to make it happen. And those children, you know, when you talk to them, you can see God is doing special things in their lives. When you sow a seed, you don't know what is going to come out. You know, let's sometimes ask God to help us to see far into the future of what he's about to do. Today, I want to share a word with you. And uh, I want us to go to the book of John, chapter 10, and verse 10. John, chapter 10, and verse 10. John, chapter 10, verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. The scripture, Jesus is speaking and he talks of a thief who has an agenda. Amen. Then Jesus also declares his agenda for us. The thief comes. His agenda is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the agenda of Jesus is to give us life so that we'll have it abundantly. Hallelujah. So the agenda of the thief is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the agenda of Jesus is to restore what the enemy or the thief has stolen. To bring back to life what the thief has killed. Amen. And to, and to restore what the thief has destroyed. My title or my theme for tonight is Jesus will restore it all. Amen. What the enemy has stolen, what he has killed, what he has destroyed, Jesus will, destroy, will, will restore it. What he has even purposed in the year 2020, 
to destroy, to kill, and to, uh, to, to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus has declared that he has given us life already. So you are unkillable. Amen. Amen. So when Jesus speaks, his word stands. If you look at the context, Jesus, when you go from verse 1 of the book of John chapter 10, Jesus was talking about his sheep. Amen. Which means that the thief or the devil will come after the sheep of Jesus Christ. Anybody here who is a, 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 a sheep of Jesus, he's talking about us, believers. Hallelujah. So the devil has an agenda to steal us. But, you know, when we talk about the devil stealing, I know some of you are holding on to your wallet. Today, he will not touch my money. He will not touch my children. But you know the most valuable thing that you have, that the thief wants to steal. The book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 36, tells us, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Read it carefully. Which means, if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul, you have lost. That is to say, your soul is worth more than the riches of Bill Gates. Amen. Than all the oil in the Middle East, all the oil in Nigeria, and all the oil in Ghana, all the oil in Angola. Your soul is worth more than that. Your soul is worth more than the gold in the world. Hallelujah. It's worth more than the buildings in Dubai. You may not realize it. And some of you young people, maybe you haven't paid income tax before. And so far as the IRS is concerned, they think even the, the, the number... The card that they wrote your social security number on, they have wasted it because you haven't paid that amount to the IRS. But I've come here to tell you, you are worth more. You are, your soul is worth more. You may not realize it. Some of you, the devil has beaten you down so much. No job problems. And you guys say, what am I doing in this world? Jesus said, if the devil gives you the whole world for your soul, don't take it. You see, and the devil knows this. The devil knows this. So, what I want to tell you today is that when he says the thief has come to steal, he doesn't want your money. He doesn't want your car. He doesn't want your house. What the devil wants is your soul. Satan knows accounting. He's not a fool. He knows what has value. That is why he went to Jesus and said, look, if you will bow down and worship me, I'll give the whole world to you. Do you know that he was trying to cheat Jesus? Because the word of God tells us that because Jesus came to die on the cross, every knee in heaven, on earth, and under the earth will bow to him. So Jesus was trying to offer Jesus one third of what God was offering him so that he would, you know, to take the glory from Jesus. The devil is a cheat. He knows what is valuable, and he knows that your soul is worth more than the whole world. So the devil will come after your soul than the whole world. So when he says the thief is coming to steal, please don't look anywhere else. It's you. And everything the devil is doing, he has only one purpose. The job he makes you lose, the diseases he attacks you with, the frustration he brings into your life, he just wants you to give up Jesus. He wants you to backslide. So when you backslide, then he will have your soul. That is his goal. Amen. That is his goal. So we need to be very, very, very aware of the warfare that we are doing. All the trials that come, all the troubles that come, all the confusion, all the fighting, and so on. The devil is after your soul. He doesn't care about your money. That car who had an accident and was destroyed, he doesn't care about it. It's your soul that he wants. Hallelujah. And that is the goal of the thief. That is his agenda. But when he steals you, how does he steal? He steals by deception. Hallelujah. He steals by deception. But when he steals you, he's not going to give you a good time. Hallelujah. If you are here, 
and you think you're having a good time with the devil, let me tell you something. The devil doesn't want to give you pleasure. He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. So after the, the, the pleasure, there is a price you have to pay at the end. Hallelujah. Because he will make you pay a price bigger than what he has given you. So after the devil has stolen you, his goal is to kill you. He says he comes to steal, to kill. Eventually, he will try to kill you. And there are two ways in which he kills. There is spiritual death. There is also physical death. You see, as far as the devil is concerned, please read Matthew 10, 28 for me. Matthew 10, 28. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You see, there is a destruction of the body. To the devil, that means nothing. Hallelujah. His ultimate goal is destruction in hell. That is why the, the scripture says that he will kill and then he will destroy. Because spiritual death is separation from God. So when the devil comes to you, all he wants to do is to separate you from God. Because once he separates you from God, in essence, you are dead to God. God told Adam and Eve, the day you eat of this fruit, you will die. The devil came to convince them to eat it. When they ate, did they die physically? No. But immediately, they started running away from God. So there, is, there was a separation. Hallelujah. Brethren, and we need to understand this. That all that the devil is doing is to separate you from God. Because when he separates you from God, he has killed you spiritually. And he wants to hold on to you until you die physically so that you will be committed to hell. The ultimate destruction. That is why the word of God talks about killing before destruction. Amen. Because the destroying is eternal death. Hallelujah. And that is the devil's agenda for all of us. Some of you have said, I won't go to church again because I went to church and someone did something to me. The devil doesn't care about your emotion. All he wants to do is to separate you from God. And Jesus is saying it here that the, the, the agenda is very, very clear. You see, and what I want us to do is to look at Adam and Eve. When God put them in the Garden of Eden, there was no sin there. Everything was perfect. Hallelujah. God used to come. Instead of going to church once a week, the Bible says that in the cool of the evening, God will come and have fellowship with them. So God was their pastor, and every day they'll go to church with God and everything. Yes, till the devil came. Amen. So if you think he will not come after you because you are in agape, and we bind and we cast and we declare the blood, you mark the door and everything, my brother, my sister, he will come. Amen. He will still come. So he came in, and how did he get Adam and Eve with lies? Because God has told them something, and he came with deception. When they, once they believe what the devil has said or what God has said, immediately the dynamics changed. They have handed themselves over to him. There are many doctrines that are going around the world today. And people talk and talk. You listen to YouTube, especially the internet is so free. Everybody sits down and they are talking anything they want to talk. Yes, they cannot give a reference point. And people are believing strange things. Oh, I heard somebody on YouTube. Really? You are going to tie the eternal destiny of your soul to somebody sitting on YouTube talking? It's all part of the enemy's deception. So that he will steal our, he will steal our hearts. Hallelujah. And they say there are many ways to heaven. There is this. Okay. Amen. I remember when I was in college, some of our, one of our people believe in these professors. They will come and they will teach, you know, mathematical physics, quantum physics, and they say there is no God. And some people believe them. One day I was in the hospital, and I saw a very brilliant professor. He was so drunk. He was brought there for treatment, sitting there, puked all over himself. I look and said, this man wants me to follow, to stake the eternal destiny of my soul on the things he's telling me about the fact that there is no God. This man said, no, not minus me. Hallelujah. Amen. As some of you are following people who don't know they are left from their right. Because somebody gives them a channel and they are talking. It's the same deception that the devil used on Adam and Eve. Where did they know that snake from? You know God. God is speaking to you. Then somebody comes and tells you, and you believe anything they have gullible. The devil's tactics has not changed. 
But when they believe his lie, and then they sinned against God, guess what? They started running from God. So the spiritual death has happened. The God who used to meet you every day, chat with you, talk with you, who made you in his own image, hallelujah, and gave you dominion over all his creation, you have believed the devil who has not done anything for you before. And because of that, you have lost foolish, but now you are hiding from God as if it's possible to hide from God. You see what the devil can reduce us to? But spiritually, they were dead. And he has sent confusion into their minds. And that's what the devil is doing to some of us. He is stealing us. Hallelujah. And now they were separated from God. So spiritually, they were dead. You see, but when the devil kills you, it's a systematic destruction. Do you realize people who knew God, who walked with God, who were created by God, who had dominion over the whole earth, all of a sudden they gave birth to two boys. Amen. Cain and Abel, you know the story. One of them became a murderer, and one of them became a murder victim. You see how low they have fallen? You see what the devil can do to you? You know, and I, I, I was meditating on the word, and it was telling me that, look, when you don't walk with God, even after you are dead, the devil will destroy your legacy. Are you hearing me? You see, it is not so much so when you die, but what happens afterwards? I remember one time I was um, went to visit my mother in Ghana. At that time, she was sick, and she was worried she would die. She thought some people are trying to kill her. You know what I just said? I said, Mom, let me tell you something. If, if anybody spiritual, she had been having some dreams or somebody pushing her head down some steps, and then she fell down, and her tie broke, she told her, I said, don't worry about it. If they kill you, we will bury you so gloriously they will regret killing you. <laughs> are you hearing me? Hey, if the devil even kills you physically, God can even glorify you in death. That is the God we serve. Look, Abraham Lincoln was shot by somebody in a theater in D.C. Who thought he was doing him evil? Today, Abraham Lincoln's name is glorified. Go all over America. Monuments have been built to Lincoln. Hallelujah. President Kennedy was shot by someone who thought he was destroying him. Hallelujah. But now his name has become a legacy. The Kennedy name. Are you hearing me? So you see, when you are with God, even in physical death, you can be glorified. But when you are in the devil, you can live 120 years and he can still disgrace you. Because he's wicked. Look at Adam and Eve. And then people who walk with God, they had a better than us. So they saw God face to face. Your two children, one is murdered and one is a murderer. If it's today, some of our villages, they say that they are cursed. Am I, am I lying? Yeah. Huh? Your own son killed the other one, not even a stranger. And look at Genesis 6 verse 5. Look at what God said about them. See, progressively they were deteriorating. And when you allow the devil to steal and to kill you, he causes you to, to deteriorate progressively. Look at what he says here. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This is what is happening to their generation. People who saw God face to face, who were supposed to have dominion, it is the work of the devil. So when you see the sin around us, you see the shootings around us, you see the mess around us, it's all part of the devil's agenda. But because man has allowed him to take over our society. Hallelujah. That is the agenda of the devil. And that agenda has not changed. It's still going on. It's still against the church. Hallelujah. You see, but it's very important that we are not ignorant of the agenda of the devil. We have to be aware of it as we enter the year 2020. The word of God says in 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 11, let Satan take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. If you walk into 2020 naive, thinking everything will be perfect, he will take advantage of you. Hallelujah. You must beware. Sometimes, look, I tell brethren, when, when somebody starts talking to you, you must spiritually figure out where is this thing going to. You know, I, was teach, I used to teach Sunday school in my, my former church, and one time I traveled to Texas, 
and um, it turned out to be a women's conference, we represent the company I was working for. And, and the last day, I was standing at the checkout, there was somebody who was, you know, one of the ladies there, you know, with the wish to ride together, go to lunch, and I'm trying to uh, play check, and I said, that was the first time I wasn't wearing a suit, you know, wearing an interlock. Come there, hey, Joy, look, do you work out? And I was telling him, I said to myself, Abu Sanabi, <laughs> devil, <laughs> you want to come in? And they were laughing at me that I was paranoid. But my brother and my sister walked into 2020 paranoid of the devil. Because he's dangerous. He has an agenda. And if you think he doesn't know you, he doesn't know your name, he doesn't know your strength, he doesn't know your weaknesses, you are walking into a trap. He'll take advantage of you. Hallelujah. But thank God, praise God, that the devil has an agenda for you, but Jesus also has an agenda for you. Come on, somebody, say hallelujah to that. I want you to know, the devil has an agenda for you. He wants to steal, he wants to kill you, he wants to destroy you. But I thank God that Jesus also has an agenda. And the agenda of Jesus is that he has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. His agenda is to, is to restore life to us. Which the thief has stolen. He wants to restore what the thief has killed. And he wants to restore what the thief has destroyed. So if you look back in the year 2019... And you find the devil has stolen from you. The devil has killed something that was yours. Or he has destroyed something that belongs to you. I have news for you. Jesus has come to give you life, to restore it to you. If the devil has disgraced you, Jesus will bring you glory to the life that he has. Hallelujah. And don't forget this. The emphasis is on Jesus. He is the one who will restore you. This year, this year, don't forget this. Our focus must be on Jesus. To have more of him. Hallelujah. He is the one who will make the difference. Nothing else. There are too many things floating around now. But focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, the life that Jesus gives. Please read John 1 verse 4 for me. John chapter 1 verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Amen. Amen. In Jesus is life, and the life is the light of men. I want to talk about in him was life, but let me first go to the second passage. And the life was the light of men. So when, you see, I told you that the devil steals it by deception. Are you getting me? For somebody to deceive you, you must be ignorant. But the light, Jesus says, I have come that you must have life. That life that Jesus gives you is light. Amen. So that light will shine upon the enemy's deception and you will see him. So that light that Jesus is coming to give us is light. It's enlightened, it opens our eyes so we can see what the devil is about. So we are not walking in ignorance. But the key is this. It is in him, Jesus. That life is in him. He is not coming to just give you the life. You know, let me hand you the life and then he goes away. The life is in him. So you must have him. To have life. Are you getting me? You, you can't do it any other way. It's not about joining a church. It's not about the number of hours you are going to pray. Number of days you are going to fast. If you do the fast, it's good to fast. But during the fast, have more of Jesus. Ask him to get into your life. And some of you, if you are here, you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Don't enter 2020 without doing it. Because the antidote to the agenda of the devil is in Christ. And he will not give it to you. You have to take him with that all together. So you receive light. Hallelujah. If you, were, you knew Jesus, you have received him before. But you have walked away from him. It's time to come back to him. Hallelujah. It's time to come back to him. It's about Jesus. Not about me. Not about the church. Not about Agape. Not about your pastor. Not about somebody who can do miracles for you. It's about Jesus. And this year, let that be our focus. The life is in him. The antidote to our problems. The antidote to what the devil is trying to do is in Jesus. Let's not forget that. Hallelujah. John 5, 26 also says the same thing. For as the father has life in himself, 
So he has granted the son to have life in himself. So the life is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the word of God gives, okay, please read John 1, 12 for me. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. Amen. Yes. So the life is in him. And God has given the life to us to contract. So when you receive him, then you receive that light with him. Are you getting me? And God gives you the right to become the son of God. What, what does it mean? It means you are born anew. You have new life. Are you getting me? So you are born again. So it's about receiving Christ so you can have a new life and you will be born again. Very key. Many of us are very religious, but we haven't received Christ. Make sure you receive him because it's a package and that life is in him. He is not going to hand it to you and then walk away from you. Hallelujah. That is my prayer for you today, that this will happen even as we enter the new year. Praise the Lord. And as we enter the new decade. But what if I have received the Lord Jesus as my Savior already? I know him as my Savior. And I know many of you here have received him as your Savior. Let's read the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Amen. This is a scripture which, when I came to know the Lord, we use it a lot when we were witnessing to people. Will you please open your heart like Jesus come inside the door and knocking? But if you look at the context, this was written to the church of Laodicea. It was a Christian church. They were believers. But it was a lukewarm church. And Jesus is saying that even though he had received him as your savior, he was the, supposed to be the Lord of the church. The, of which the church belonged to Jesus. Jesus says, I'm outside. And he's telling believers to open the door for him to come in. Hallelujah. And you know, there are many believers who have believed in Jesus today, and he's outside, he's knocking. Please let me, you know why? And I'd like somebody to give a very good analogy. Like if you come to my house as a guest, you will sit in my living room. You won't come to my bedroom. Are you getting me? But when my, my daughter or my son or my grandson comes, they come to my house, and they get down there and they open the door. Some of them even have keys to my house, though. Yes, they live in their own house. Daddy, mommy, and I'm not there. They walk upstairs. That, are you there? They knock my door and they come in there. What the scripture is saying, Jesus does not want to be a guest. He wants to be the Lord of your life. He wants to be the center of your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. For many of us are going to experience, because you see, if Jesus is in the living room and the devil is in your bedroom, who do you think is going to dictate what happens in your, in, your, in your house? Are you getting me? For many of us, we received Jesus. He saved us. We were washed in the blood. And we were walking with him. We were on fire. But now, gradually, 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 we have put in some, some corner in the living room. I'm telling you, 2020, let there be a change. Let there be a change. Let's go back to the way we were with him. When we were zealous for him. And everything that we did, what does the word say? What does the word say? Two of us today, we think we have become too mature. Become wiser than the word of God. Hey, we are in America, you know. After here, we are not like the way we were when we were in Africa. So it's different, man. The word of God will not change for you. Let us go back to the way we were. Some of you, before you came to, to, to America to get your visa, the first thing you fasted, since you came here, you haven't fasted like that before because you got a visa. And today, the same God you prayed for to get that visa, you have forgotten him. You think you are better than him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make him the center of your life. When you make him the center, then he will kick the devil out. And bring restoration, restoration to you. If you look at the scripture, it says that I will come in and dine with him and he with me. You see, when you dine with someone, it's a sign of intimacy. Are you getting me? You, it's a sign of intimacy. That is why if, 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 if you, you hear that your wife or your husband or your boyfriend or your girlfriend has wanted to date with someone for dinner, you get angry. Why? Do you want to eat? Your plate, my plate, and... <laughs> But some of you will come to pastor. He, 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 he took, my, my, my wife, my husband took somebody to dinner. And I will support you too. 
Amen. That is why you only, when you meet a young, a young guy, when you meet a young lady, you like her, can I take you out? To do what? To eat, right? If the person agrees to go and eat, you come and say, yes, 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 what? You just went to eat. So Jesus is basically saying that, look, men, I've been in your life for a while. When was the last time you went out on a date? Amen. You get me? Everybody is taking you on a date except the Lord Jesus. He said, let me come in. Let's bring the relation to where it was. Remember the way it was when you came to know me at first. Until you came to America and got two jobs. You came to America and got two jobs. Today, when you pray five minutes, man, I'm busy. I got to go to work. I don't have time for church. I don't have time for God. Hallelujah. He is standing out. If you read the scripture in, in, in its totality, this Revelation 3, the church, the letter to the church of Laodicea, he said that church was lukewarm. Jesus wants to make you hot. Hallelujah. He's a consuming fire, but the fire does not only consume, the fire also refines. When you are in Christ, the fire it refines. He's a, also a refining fire. So he wants to come in and refine you, to warm you up, to change things up, so the devil will flee from your life. This year, 2020, some of us need to make a decision that will open up and let Jesus come back in the center of our life. Make him the center of our lives. Hallelujah. That is the way in which we can experience restoration and the enemy cannot kill and destroy us. Oh, let us put, put this prayer point down. Pray for Jesus to take the center in your life, the center in your family, the center in your church. Hallelujah. As you enter this new, new, this new decade. So that you restore the intimate relationship you had with him before. Because we all started there. Hallelujah. And you've had it before. Now let's read Philippians 3 and verse 10. Philippians 3.10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the Apostle Paul saying this. He's a man who met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And he asked Jesus, who are thou, Lord? And Jesus says, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. And Jesus actually sent somebody to him to pray for him so that he received Jesus as Savior. So he knew Jesus. Amen. And yes, so the Apostle Paul is saying that, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. There is a knowledge of Christ that brings salvation. But Paul says, I want to go beyond there. And what he's talking about, knowing the power of his resurrection. What does it mean? The power of his resurrection is that resurrection that when I'm down, when I'm dead, can raise me up again. Amen. You see, when you walk with Christ, it's not all rosy. There are times... You go through difficult things. There are times you would think the enemy has killed you. But say, Paul says, I want the faith. Amen. So I will know the power of his resurrection. So even if I'm killed and buried, I will trust that Jesus can raise me up again. Hallelujah. It is that resilient faith of, to believe in the power of Jesus to bring you back. So when you've been through something and you are down, you know you can come up again. Hallelujah. Because for Jesus to be able to give you this life, so when the enemy steals, kills, and destroys, you must have faith that he can bring you back. So when the tragedy, the problem happens, you don't say it is over, it is closed, and now I'm finished with God. This is the attitude I want to take into 2020. So when, whatever the enemy does to us, we say that we will know Jesus, not just know him for salvation, but also know power of the resurrection. Then it goes on to that, the fellowship of his suffering. So I will identify with him even in his suffering because Jesus himself suffered. You want to talk about rejection? He experienced it. You know that, right? Because he came unto his own and his own received him not. He came unto his own and received him not. So a little rejection. Oh, my feelings are hurt. My feelings are hurt. Hey. But you need to get a point where you know Jesus suffered. So you identify, you know you also go through it. So when you are rejected, when you are hurt, people do things again, people talk about you. you know, sometimes when I, I want people to do the work of God and I give them some title, they are so happy, they come and thank me. I say, you don't know what you are signing up for. 
you don't know what you are signing up for. Because sometimes, you see, for you to be able to walk with God and do this work of God, the very hand that you feed sometimes will bite you. But they bite you, you do this, then you put the food in your mouth again. Hallelujah. Amen. But you can't do it unless you, are, you identify with him in his suffering. Because that is what he went through. Amen. That is what he went through. The very people he was trying to save, they are the people who killed him. And yet still, yet still, some of them are believing in him and he's still saving them. Is somebody getting me? You see, but you need to get to that point. When you get to that point, where you can identify with him in his suffering, it becomes very difficult for the enemy to discourage you. Because all these trials he's bringing, the people talking about you and all that, he makes you hear about it to discourage you. But when you get to the point where you identify with Christ in his suffering, you, it doesn't move you. Are you getting me? It doesn't shake you. They'll say, don't you know what they are saying about you? I don't care. Amen. Amen. Because they did that to my Lord. And we need to get to that point. Look, I said on Sunday that we are maturing. This church is 21 years old now. Amen. And, and sometimes, you know, when your little baby falls down, you pick them up. But when your big boy, the one who eats the fufu with you, and all the things with you, he has all the teeth and everything, he finally says, get up, get up. And that's what we're going to be doing to some of you. Hallelujah. As we enter this year, 2020, we need to mature. We need to identify with him in his suffering. Hallelujah. And he said we'll be conformed to his, to his death. He's not saying go and kill yourself. Jesus has died already. You don't need to die. But to be conformed in his death actually is amplified. It's, it's explaining Galatians 2 verse 20. Please read Galatians 2 20 for me. Well, I, have, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. In the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes. You, and when you identify yourself with Christ, we are saying that when Christ was crucified, you were crucified with him. Your old man, yourself, is crucified with Christ. And he has resurrected into a newness of life. So this life that you live, you live for him. Everything that you have, everything that you are, is for him. Hallelujah. He takes care of you, he protects you. So sometimes you don't even care about your reputation too much. It's more about the reputation of Jesus. Look, there are some of us as Christians... If somebody insults you, hey, you have a big nose. Hey, you have a big nose. You are sucking all the air in the room. <laughs> hey! He said, I have a big nose. He said, I have a big nose. Have a... And then the, the very same person will insult Jesus. Oh, Lord, forgive them for they don't know what they do. When they say your nose is big, you say, Lord, forgive them for they don't know what they do. You, you, you flare up. You are angry immediately. But when you get to that point, where you know your own nature is crucified, in this life that you are living, you are living for him. He becomes your priority. Hallelujah. You defend him or you care more about his glory than about yourself. There are some of us who can witness. Because we think that people will not respect us anymore. They think we are not cool. So we are leaving them to go to hell, even though Jesus has died for them. That is one of the greatest barriers to witnessing, to evangelism. Because we don't want to offend people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you go back to John chapter 10 and verse 10, the sentence ends this way. I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Come on, tell somebody, this life, I want to have it more abundantly. Jesus did not just come to give us life. He came to give us life more abundantly. And this year, I want you to understand something as we enter 2020. Abundant life is an overflowing life. It means you can't contain it. Hallelujah. He has given you so much life, more than is you need to live your life. Are you getting me? So what must happen, some of it must flow out to other people. Pr praise the Lord. So it is more than we need for our restoration. This life must overflow to others, which means that we must need others to Christ so they can also receive restoration. Because your cup runneth over. Don't let it just go on the ground. Give it to somebody so they can also have some to drink. This life that Christ has is more than you. 
So let somebody also receive some. Because those people also, the devil is, 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 is stealing them, he is killing them, and he is destroying them. And they need redemption. And you have received more than you need. So why are you keeping it to yourself? This year, this year, you must make a decision. This scripture says he, the devil is come to steal, to kill, and destroy. And we are not happy that he's killing, he's stealing, he's destroying. The solution is abundant life. And Christ has given us excess of it. Overflowing. We need to share so others will come to Christ. Every believer, you can clap for that. It's very important. You can clap. But remember, you clap. Let me tell you this. Every believer, make a decision. This 2020, I win and so um, I've said it before, but let me say it again. Because I feel led to do it. The passion we pray with. The fashion we fast. When we want to have physical children. If we apply the same passion to soul winning, I'm telling you, the world will be a different place. But we are population, populating the earth. That is good. God said, be fruitful and multiply. Amen. But he also gave us the great commission. We are meant to also populate heaven. Amen. And he has given us power to do both. In the garden of Eden, he declared, be fruitful and multiply. And straight away it was released and reproduction started. On the day of Pentecost, he said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me. Go ye into the world, therefore, and preach the gospel. Why are we sitting down? Make a decision for yourself. That if I receive this life and it's abundant life, it's overflowing. At least I'm going to lead one person to Christ this year. When we get to heaven, God is not going to reward you for the tithe that you pay here. I'm sorry. I know we need the money. Amen. But there's a special crown reserved for those who win souls. And the Bible says those who, are, who win souls are wise. They are wise. And let me tell you, the world is suffering. They need Christ. He is the solution to their problem. And we have the solution and we are keeping it to the self. And you know what? The devil loves it. Because if Christians will get aggressive and begin to witness, we are going to depopulate hell. And you have not have the company that he needs there. This year, this year, Christ has come to restore. But don't think about what he has come to restore for you only. Your money, your cars, the things you have lost, and so on. He has come to also bring reconciliation, restore the world to God. Let's make that part of our agenda. Let us make that part of our agenda. Amen. This year we win souls into the kingdom. We must not keep the restoration to ourselves. God, the problem with Christianity today is so messed up. When I came to know Christ, it wasn't that way. Everybody has come for their miracle. Amen. So I want my miracle. You want your miracle. Everyone for himself, God for us all. If the early people had behaved that way, we probably wouldn't be Christians here today. Are you getting me? For those of you who come from Africa, where you have Bibles in your languages, do you know in Ghana, for example, some German missionaries came to Ghana. They didn't speak English. They spoke in, speak, speaking German. They came to learn our languages, including our a upgraded man's language. <laughs> yes, anyway. It's not an easy language. And they wrote the Bible in it. They wrote it in the Quiapim. So they came to learn our language and they wrote the Bible in our language for us so we can find Christ. And today, I won't go to church because they, would, they won't let me speak Chi. And I want to speak Chi. I want to speak Chi. <laughs> How does who doesn't speak Chi? You don't ask for them, they should go and go to hell. We need to repent, oh. We need to. Paul said, I became all things unto all men that I might win some to Christ. Amen. He was willing to make that sacrifice. I was in high school. And somebody who has finished the school, high school I went to, gone to college for four years, graduated, had a good job at Ghana Broadcasting Corporation as a set designer. We were sitting there, and he said the Holy Spirit told him that the children in your former high school, they are getting lost. Go and reach out to them. That man came to the principal in my high school, talked to him. Every Wednesday afternoon, he came to preach to us. That is how I found Christ. Amen. And I have many friends today who are pastors, powerful pastors, who found Christ through that man. 
Every day, his lunch break, he will come. And I thought, we're wondering, how does he pay for his transportation? All from his pocket. He will come and preach Christ to us. And that is how we found Christ. And that's why today you have a pastor here. It was a conscious decision. I'm going to reach out to these children. His name is Dr. Awasu. Dr. Wilson Awasu. He paid his own way there. God, we were children. We didn't have honorarium to give to him. It was sometimes I went to his house to pray with him. He paid for our transportation too and gave us food to eat. All from his pocket. And today, 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 we see the world sliding to hell and we don't care. Jesus wants to restore, but this restoration is not just for you. It's so that the world will also come to know Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. To be able also to lead people to Christ, to be effective against the devil. Amen. We need a restoration of gifts and ministries in the body of Christ. Do you hear me? We need a restoration. Look, for our eyes to be open so the devil cannot deceive us, the gifts must be open. And I don't know, let me tell you this. I believe it's the Holy Spirit who is giving me to say this. There are some of you, when you came to know Christ years ago, God was using you. Some of you, prophecies, revelation, powerful preaching, teaching, ministry, evangelism. For the past 10 years, you haven't done anything because you've come to America. You have killed a gift. You have allowed the devil to steal your spiritual gift. And you are depriving the body of Christ of your giftings. Oh, this year may there be a restoration. This year may there be a restoration of giftings within the body of Christ. And you come to church every day. You sit in the back quiet. Backbencher. Backbencher. As for me, I don't want to be bothered though. And you know how Africans are. Eh? And they will talk about me. So pastor, please leave me alone. No. I don't know you, but the Holy Spirit knows you. And he knows the gift that he has deposited in you. And don't tell me that you don't have the gift anymore. The word of God tells in Romans eleven twenty nine. Please read it aloud for us to hear. Romans eleven twenty nine. Please write it down. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. They are what? Irrevocable. They are what? My brother, my sister, you can sleep on your gifting, your ministry, your calling for 10, 20 years. It is irrevocable. God is still waiting for you. He has a calling for you. He has a ministry for you. He has a task for you to accomplish. That is why he brought you here for that purpose. And you've been sitting on it. It's a year of restoration. But today, I want the Holy Spirit. He wants to stir up the giftings in his people. We need to rise up and take the church to the next level. And I was living in Ghana. And I want to tell my pastor that I'm leaving. You know what he told me? You are running away from the call of God. He said, this man, Pa, what is he talking about? I came, I was in a church doing my business. I remember one day, I went to prayer meeting. My wife and my baby at the time, we had one baby. When I got there, one of the associate pastors was standing there. That's why he always stands like this. When he saw me, he said, hallelujah. I said, what? He said, God has been speaking to me that he wants to use you in the youth ministry. And I put a fleece before him that if it's really his voice, you must come to church today, so I tell you. And he took me to the youth ministry. And there was a time at some point, the youth ministry Sunday evening services was bigger than even the main church. Some of those young people today are pastors. Hallelujah. There is a gifting that was in me that I was sitting on. But I thank God that I repented. May somebody repent like me today. Hallelujah. May somebody repent like me today. I know probably you came today expecting some special prophecy. Who will die next year, 2020? Who will win the election 2020? Sorry to disappoint you. Me, I don't do that. Hallelujah. I want to stir you up. God wants to restore something. And within my spirit, I know that his giftings and his ministry and his callings on people, God says, I've waited for far too long. I brought you here for a purpose and you are sitting on these giftings. He wants to stir up. It is not your own. Every gifting, every calling, every ministry that you have belongs to the body of Christ. Please, don't rob us. 
Don't rob us. We need the gift things in the body of Christ. Sometimes as pastor, I sit down. You know what I want? My dream? I want to take this church to the new level. But I need helpers. I have enough of them. But I know the issue. Sometimes I see that some of them are overworked. I'm assigning them too many things. Who else can I trust? The gifts are here. They are here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please don't get up and go and say, I won't come back. It's the Holy Spirit who is speaking to you. There are some of you, God has used you in the past. And for some reason, you've given up. Now, as I was preparing this word, God was telling me, I know people want me to restore all kinds of things to them. But I want to restore my people to intimate fellowship with me. Hallelujah. I want to restore them to intimate fellowship with me. I want to restore them to the old time way that the church will go out and win souls and bring them into the house of God. Oh, I remember when we started Calvary Baptist, Pastor Kofi, you were not there. Every day after Sunday service, we'll go to Liberation Circle, which was right in the center of Accra. We'll meet people and we'll witness to them. We're a small church. We used to meet in a movie house. Then a missionary built a church for us. We will go out every day after school. We're young people, students, and we'll witness to them. And they said, what should we do? We pray with them and say, Sunday, come to that church. Sunday, come to that church. We're not even writing their names down. And some of them will come. They'll go for receive Christ. They show us, they come and hug you. Say, where do I know you? You spoke to me. You witness to me. This is the beauty of the church. And God wants to restore it. He's calling us back to that. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. And he's calling us to stir up. As I'm speaking, some of you know what I'm talking about. He wants to lift us up. This is the restoration. This year, 2020, God wants to restore his church. Because the devil has an agenda. But Christ also has an agenda. But for his agenda to come to pass, he needs us. He needs every one of us. He needs every one of us. Some of you, maybe even you came here, you started. But you gave up because the devil did something to you. He touched you a little bit. Sensitivity. Hey, I don't want to. Hallelujah. One time I told somebody that if somebody will be upset and leave this church, I should be the first. Do you, do you, do you, uh, maybe you don't believe me. But probably what you think you are going through, I'm going through ten times of that. Are you hearing me? But I come here every day, say, God, give me the grace to preach. Hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet. We have a little more time before we enter the new year. Harabo sakatabo sataba baba. I know this is not what we expected the first night. But I believe God wants to take us to a new level. He wants to do a new thing in us as a church and as individuals. Say, Lord, restore me. Restore me to my first love. Restore me. Restore my ministry. Restore my passion for you. In the name of Jesus. Restore my passion, my love for you. Restore me to my intimate relationship with you. Yes, this year, 2020, Lord. Restore me, restore me, restore me, restore me. Roba baba kaba shaka baba. Begin to raise your hands wherever you begin to talk to the Lord. That it will not be the same again. It will not be the same. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Surrender, surrender to Him. That I want to enter this new year fully surrendered to you. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You may have left the church for years. It's time for you to come back. Maybe you are also here. You don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The life, the life that will counter the agenda of the enemy is in Christ. You need to receive him as your Lord and Savior. He said, as many as received him, to them gave him power. I want to call two types of people here that I want to pray for. Those who don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want to receive him for the first time. And those who know him as the Lord and Savior, but somehow through the curse of life, Gradually, Jesus has found himself out. And you see him telling you, I'm standing at the door and knocking. You are my child. But that intimate relationship is broken. I want us to pray for you. But I want all those of you standing, you can begin to pray. You can begin to pray. You know how the Lord has convicted you. That if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to come in front here. I want you to come in front here. If you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior. If you've also gone away from him all this time and you want to come back to him, Please come forward, come forward and I'll pray with you. 
Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior so you can receive the life that is in Him. Please come forward. I'm here. I'm waiting for you. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Jesus, God brought you here to this service for a special purpose. We want to have a special encounter with you. Maybe you have known Him, but you've gone back to the world and that relationship is broken. I want to encourage you come and renew your faith today. Make a public declaration that I'm renewing my faith in Christ. I want to come back to him before I enter this new year. As the music is going on and believers are praying, don't be shy, don't be shy. Just come forward. Come on, take me back. Take me back. from you Lord but I still hear you calling me those simple things that I once knew the memories keep drawing with me oh, I must confess Lord I But yet my soul, my soul's not satisfied. 